we're scraping the bottom of the barrel today, folks. There's no point in suggesting otherwise. Bit of West Ham news for you. A little bit of a West Ham um, news roundup. It, we're, we're picking at the carcass. There's not a lot of meat on the bones at the moment. But you know what? It's what happens in the international break, right? And what I want to say, I didn't want to do a, a sort of another video sort of bashing David Moyes and talking about relegation and, and this, that and the other. So we'll deal with the stories that we got and that's it. But thank you to everybody who interacted on the other videos uh, sort of done this week. That's been very, very much appreciated. Right, I'll tell you what, there is an interesting one, a really interesting one. Um, let me just, okay, first of all, there's a really rubbish story, I think, about... Uh, about Arthur Masuaku, has he played his last game for West Ham? Uh, it's, it's at a website called Court Offside. Yes, he's played his last game for West Ham. That's all we need to um, say about that. I probably just want to touch on, because it is really a West Ham story, before I get on to Alphonse Areola, and the fact we might be looking at another goalkeeper, that's coming up, just so as you know. Uh, you know, bit of a spoiler, but anyway, uh, ho hopefully you'll, you'll sit through the rest of this old rubbish um, and get we'll get to that bit. Um, I just want to touch on what Declan Rice said about England's performance. Uh, I know I did a little discussion about Gareth Southgate and about David Moyes yesterday, uh, but I did think this was interesting. Um, he said, I think we, I thought we controlled the game. Um, I think we're getting better. <laughs> um, we passed the ball around well, especially in the first half. We just like that, like that cutting edge in the end. Um, it's coming. He says it's coming. Much better performances. Uh, I the World Cup is close. I mean, really, really close. It's no good that it's it's coming. That's not good. It really needs to be there now. Um, I don't think England controlled the game. I thought England were outclassed, really, by Italy. I thought Italy's tactics were spot on. I mentioned yesterday about the pressing. Um, I mean, Gareth Sal said Gareth Southgate side had fifty six percent possession. You got the you got the. I got the impression that. England had the possession that Italy allowed us to have. Um, I don't think we played well at all. I was really concerned about how, how what a lack of cohesion there was in attack. But to have a player that good in, in Harry Kane, and he's, he is a world-class player, and, and not be able to get that much out of him, I think is, is a major worry. I, I think it's a worry that you can make... I mean, Phil Foden, I think, is a brilliant player. Why can't we be getting more out of him? I, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of worries there. But I, look, I understand that Declan Rice has got to say that. Also, I don't think Declan looks at his best in an England shirt, I've got to say. Um, although he wasn't one of the worst players, far from it. And I, I did. I thought him and Jude Bellingham linked up uh, well on a number of occasions, actually. So anyway, so that's, that's that. Let me just get to this um, Areola uh, business. Because basically, there's an article here that suggests West Ham are looking at another goalkeeper. Now, um, it's, the, it's the Sevilla goalkeeper. I'm going to ruin his name now. Maybe maybe I won't. Um, his name's Yassine Bonu. I probably didn't. That's probably how it's said. Or bon You say Bonu, I say Bonel. Um, now, there's, it's basically, this is from Court Offside again, but they're quoting a newspaper called La Raison. And it said, West Ham have inquired about replacing Alphonse Areola with La Liga keeper... Yassin Bono says the Moroccan international was impressed with good performances for Sevilla, um, but he has a £44 million release clause. OK, that's the point where you stop finding this stuff believable. Agree. But, however, scratch below the surface and there's, there possibly is something there. Um, and it's really this next sentence that probably says that. It says, Areola is yet to win the starting spot from Lucas Fabianski, despite spending last season on loan from PSG. Well, they're right, aren't they? I mean, they are right on that. Um, OK, last season, at the start of last season, I said a couple of things. And I said, um, very, very early in the season, I said, I'm not sure David Moyes fancies either Alex Crow or, uh, or Alphonse Areola. I said, I don't think either of these transfers are going to be made permanent. Of course, I was wrong on Alex Crow. Uh, sorry, I was, I was right on Alex Crow. I was wrong on, on Areola. But I said it quite early. It just didn't seem. It just didn't strike me as we look. We we know what David Moyes does when he likes a player, right? When David Moyes likes a player, like Thomas Suchek, bang, he's in. Zuma, you're in straight away when it absolutely is. But just the way he's still still this season, even though we paid the money, he's drip feeding Ariola into the team intermittently, very much, very much as the he's the B goalkeeper, isn't he? And even if you look, Ariola played the other day for France, by the way. 
Um, so the French don't seem to have a, have a problem with him. I'm not saying Moyes has got a problem with him, but when you look at the way Moyes is deploying him, is he, is he the outright favourite of David Moyes? No, he's not. He's, he is not David Moyes' first choice. So if you concede that he's not David Moyes' first choice, then it stands to reason you would concede that is he is he replaceable? I think he may well be, and I don't want a mischief make on this. And before I go any further, this video is sponsored by the fantasy football app, which is called Spitch. You can download Spitch by using that link below. Why would you download Spitch? Well, first of all, you can win money, which is no bad thing, is it? Secondly, you can have lots and lots of fun. How do you win money and have fun? Well, you download the app, and what you do is, look, you can play um, this Nations League International Fantasy Football if you want. You can play Bundesliga. You can play Conference League, but... What you can do is play Premier League football and you can play a free-to-play game where you can win up to £500 each and every game week. Doesn't matter if you're joining now. Doesn't matter. All the other stuff, all the historical stuff is scrapped. So start fresh from now. Pick your team. Go on from that. Or you can also pledge money, stake money, and you can win big bucks up to £70,000 worth of prizes each and every game week on Spitch. Or just a little bit of fun. You can join myself and Gio on our Hammers Chat Mini League, which is just up there. Uh, we're, we're battling it out. I, I've got to check last week's results, but I think I think I beat Gio. I think I might be 3-2 up on Gio. Come and join us. Just and There's a communities tab at the bottom of the app. Just type in Hammers Chat. Join us in there. It's a lot of fun. Use the link below. They'll know you've come from Hammers Chat. It's 18 and above because there is a gambling element to the app. So, yes, I was just looking at the Areola situation there. Do I think we're going to spend £44 million on the goalkeeper? No, I don't. Do I think that Areola is replaceable in David Moyes' mind? Yes. But do I want Areola? Yeah, I, I, I want Areola to get a really good shot. I want, I want Areola to play realistically. I think you've got to start. I'd like him to play all season. But let's give Areola a start. Let's give him 10 Premier League games in a row. I think that's what you have to do with these players. Uh, there's too much of this at West Ham, I think, with players being drip-fed in. OK, um, I mentioned this player the other day. Shakhtar Donetsk, oh, Mikhailo Mudrik. I'm doing well on the pronunciation today. I, I think, anyway, sorry, yeah, probably, that probably really resonated in your ears when I banged that microphone there. Um, he's targeted by Arsenal, Liverpool and West Ham more than that, as I believe. Uh, this is what website? This is from Tribal Football, but a lot of the newspapers are running with this. Um, it's basically, Arsenal want him to replace um, Nicolas Pepe. Anybody would do to replace Nicolas Pepe, let's be honest with you. Um, and it said that the Hammers had scouts watching in Ukraine's 3-0 National League defeat against Scotland. Scotland did well then, didn't they? I thought... Um, we're seriously after him. Apparently, he's a very, very talented player. Don't know how true that is. Look, there's meagre pickings at the moment. OK, there's another article. As I say, there's not a lot of news. I'm not even sure it's really news. This is from Court Offside. Clearly, I've been reading a lot of Court Offside. Um, it basically says West Ham star, it's talking about Kurt Zuma, West Ham star may have lost his key trait amid ongoing injury crisis issues. It's always great when you have a defender who has got pace to pretty much to match any attacker in world football. I'm not sure that was ever the case. Anyway, he said, but there's always going to be a concern over what happens when they start to lose their speed. Um, it's basically saying, biggest concern around Kurt Zuma, because um, he's had a serious knee injury, uh, that he, he's basically looks slower. It said it might just be that he needs some rest. Uh, look, it's a pretty nothing article, to be perfectly honest here. But I, as I say, I'm not pretending there's anything of great quality in this video. But I also know what it's like when there's no West Ham gossip. There's no way you need your West Ham fix. It's really hard, uh, I think, in a transfer dead, not transfer dead, um, international break. Uh, has Kurt Zuma lost his pace? Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, but let's be fair. He arrived at West Ham with an, an injury record on his knee. Um, sounds, that doesn't sound right, does it? An injury record on his knee with a bad history of knee injuries. There we go. Um, th 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 there's not a lot of news. I'm going to leave it there, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, more areola stuff. Um, oh, hold on. There you go. Here's, here's a little story for you. Um, West Ham youngster Conor Coventry admits he was unsure if he wanted to leave West Ham to search for more game time or stay at the London Stadium. I can't believe I missed this, actually. Uh, the 22-year-old admits Moyes convinced him to stay and put up a fight for the first 10 minutes this season. That's good. OK, that's good. Uh, this is 
Quoting Coventry, uh, he said, in my head at the start, I wasn't too sure if I'd go again or stay. Eventually, I spoke to the manager and he told me he wanted me to stay and I would get as many minutes as I can. <laughs> that's, that's, um, that's not, um, yeah, I'm not sure about that as a quote. I'll get as many minutes as I can. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, it's been, I've been on a promise with a missus. I, I'm on a promise, you'll, you'll get as many... I'm actually, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to leave it. This is a this is this is a morning show after all. Um, he said, for me as an academy graduate, as a West Ham boy, ultimately I wanted to play for West Ham. For that, that's the decision I took, and I stayed. Um, there you go. Oh, that's that's quite a nice little story, and I'm glad. Yeah, it's nice to know that Moyes had a little chat with him and said, um, "You'll get as many minutes as I as I deem worthy of you." Uh, no, I'm only mate making a bit of mischief there. Uh, there you go. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. Maybe I won't. Maybe there'll be absolutely nothing to talk about at all. Anyway, if I don't see you tomorrow, I'll probably see you the day after. Thanks for tuning in.